Okay, so this is a problem in transistor. Well, this is a transistor problem, should I say. Okay, so whenever, so this kind of example, I got this one from the NCS book. Um, so some of you may have already done it um, or not, I don't know. But um, it's, a, it's a pretty good example. And the thing is, you are most likely going to see this in the exam. Or maybe not, I don't know what's going to happen, but... I've seen this a lot in when I when I took the exam. I remember solving problems like this in there. So this is a good one, really. So whenever you have a transistor problem, the first thing that I would do is to basically identify what exactly I have. Do I have a BJT? Do I have a JFET or a MOSFET? And so, um, of course, you will look at the configuration. So this is a BJT. And the way you would find out if you don't know um, um, by first glance, then you can go to the, to your book and kind of like uh, glance tr through it, and you know. So this is a section for BJT, as you can see here, and this is the configuration whether you, or not you have NPN or PNP, or you have um, JFET. So that's the configuration right there, depending on what kind of channel you have. Um. What else? You have MOSFET down there somewhere. Yeah, so it depends on what kind of configuration you have. So you go straight to that section and so you don't you don't confuse yourself. So first thing first is to identify the configuration you have. So we're dealing with BJTs here. Okay, so Next thing is to um, identify your your voltages. I mean, know what's what. What's your um, base voltage, your emitter voltage, or your collector voltage? Because it can get confusing, especially when you have um, like too many resistors and you don't know what goes where. I did have that problem, so I don't know. Maybe you don't, but um, it's really important to know what's what. So. Of course, this is your base, your collector, and your emitter right here. So this voltage over here going here, let me put the yellow. Okay, so this is your base voltage from here to here. That's your base voltage. Okay, so we can put that here, VB. Okay, now this voltage going from here to here underneath this thing is your VE that's your emitter voltage okay so you could say you can see that your base voltage is your emitter voltage plus 0.7 because the whole thing going from here this um, the uh, potential difference from here to ground is your base voltage but your emitter voltage is only from here to here okay and so when you your point 0.7 is only from here to here it can get confusing so but it's really really important to know what's what okay and so your VCC that's your total voltage that's the entire thing it goes from here to here that's your um, total VCC I don't know how they call it common collector or something like that so that's your 10 volt right here it's given so your common collector is not a voltage from here to here it's the whole thing okay now your collector voltage your VC is only from here right here to here but it's you know it goes to ground okay so that's your VC I probably yeah I'll just I'll just do it this way so this is your VC okay and this is VCC of course that's the common collector and then the voltage that goes through this particular resistor you can just call it volt V whatever v, you know whatever name so I'm not sure about the signs though, but anyway, um, yeah, it's plus minus. So just look at it as a regular circuit, really. So this is just a voltage. So we can see 
okay that the voltage here plus your um, collector voltage is equal to your total VCC okay so VCC is given as 10 VCC VC we don't know that's the question over here so it's important that you know that um, this is what the question is VC okay the collector voltage so so we can start um, by solving VC you know we can start from there so VC as you can see is going to be 10 you know the whole thing minus just this this voltage right here okay but what's that voltage that voltage is um, this resistor over here is RC is you know that's your um, collector voltage so we can put RC here and of course the current current that will go through that will be IC and oh, okay I forgot to put the um, the current but anyway um so the current that will go flow through here is going to be IE the current that will flow through here would be IC and this would be IB but IB would be JT's um, that's already I think it's it's uh, something with beta or something like that but I don't think that we, we need to deal with that now so your VC would be VCC okay Potent potential differences so just think of it as if you had um, you were you know you're just subtracting um, potential differences like a regular circuit so your, your total voltage would be this here so VC would be 10 okay minus ICRC again IC would be the current flowing through here and RC is the collector the register the collector register okay but what's IC let me okay so what's IC we know what RC is but we don't know what but we don't know we know what RC is as 4k but we don't know what IC is so we have to calculate what IC is but remember the importance of, of this is to identify that you have a BJT so let's go to the table and see what the what they tell us about when you have BJTs regarding your IBs your IEs and your ICs that's very important because you don't have to calculate them all the time sometimes Oops. Oh. Okay. So as we can see here, I C is equal to um beta IB, but beta is not given in this problem, so we can assume um that um well let's see here i see yeah so i see is equal to beta ib we don't really know what ib is i don't think we're dealing with it but let's just write write those down here so we could see so i see is equal to alpha ie and i see is equal to also beta ib and ie ib ic let's write that down So we have IE is equal to IB plus IC, is that right? Okay. So unless um, it's given here in this problem, it, it was assumed that um, beta is a very high value. 
Okay, so let, let me see here. Um, yeah, so we can assume that um, IC is equal to IE. You know, there's no um, alpha is not given, so IC, we can assume that that's equal to IE unless it's given so that's an assumption if it was given then you know you would put put it there now um, if at a very if, if at any point um, we need to deal with IB then it, since it's not given then we would have to um, assume that IC is equal to IB so IC is equal to I let me erase that we already know that IC is equal to IB IE, excuse me. So IC is equal to IE. Okay, moving along. Now, what's IE? We don't know what IE is. Again, IE is um, your current flowing through your emitter, and your emitter is just from this particular, this right here, through the particular resistor of 1.3. So IE, Ohm's law. If you were to find a current flowing through a particular resistor, then that's going to be V over R, right? So that'll be VE over RE. RE is given as 1.3. Okay, what's VE? We don't know what VE is. So we have to calculate VE. VE, that's that voltage over here. But as you can see, um, this whole voltage going from the point, uh, the base, all the way to ground is VB. So um, 0.7 plus VE is equal to VB. Okay? So we can say that VE is equal to VB minus 0.7. minus 0.7 volt okay so what's VB we don't know what VB is VB we can use voltage divider to get it because this looks like a, a just a regular circuit where you have the total voltage you have two resistors in series and a total um, res uh, a total voltage so since we need to find the voltage across this particular resistor, so we have using voltage divider that resistor plus the sum of the resistors 20 plus 80 times the total voltage, which is 10 here. That's voltage divider. So it looks like we have a number here. So 200 over 100. So we have 200 over 100 and that's 2 volt so we can work back and find our VE IE go back and find our VC so that's how I like to to do things so I start from what I don't know and work my way down or up okay so now we have 2 and therefore VE is going to be 2 minus I hope that's a good color let's see here let me use white so 2 we can go back and calculate uh, VE so that will be 2 minus 0 0.7 that's 1.3 volt okay so I can go back here and replace with VE so that's 1.3 over 1.3 Okay, so that is one milli, so because you have to convert that, so that's one milliamp. Okay, so now I see we already know what that is, so that's one milliamp. Okay, and going back up here, we know what I see is, so that's one milliamp again. And we can go ahead and finally replace our value, so that's 10 minus. 
Um, let me, where's my calculator? 0 0.01. times um, RC which is 4, well it wouldn't matter anyway four K yeah so they will cancel each other out so your final answer VC is 6 volt because that would be 4 minus 3 here 3 cancel each other out 10 minus 4 is 6 volt and that's part of the for answers. Let me, let me actually verify the answer in the back. Um, yes, that's correct. Okay. So, um, so I hope um, you, you get the concept here and you can apply this with any transistor problem you have. Because um, when I was in, in, in undergrad, that was confusing to know what's your base voltage, what's your collector voltage, so, and what kind of resist transistor you're dealing with. So the important thing is to go to your circuit first, identify what transistor you're dealing with, and go straight to the table, because in the table, if you if you see, there are a lot of assumptions here, a lot of them. So if you're dealing with the wrong resistor, then you're gonna assume the wrong things, and you don't want that. So that would be that would be the first tip, is to know exactly what you're dealing with, and then from there you put your values. So your base voltage is here. Um, this is your emitter voltage, and you understanding that the whole thing is your common collector voltage. The the ten volt was always confusing to me. Like what does that represent? But that's the whole thing. And so your collector voltage is from here to here to ground. Okay, so here also you can um, you can kind of see that if you were, for instance, asked to find the voltage that goes from here to here, this uh, you know the collector to the emitter, and that would be okay. Let me let me write it down because then, so this is B your base. This is E, and that's C. Let's say in the exam they tell you find the voltage from the um, VCE. What would be VCE? VCE would be the voltage from here. This would be VCE. This is just um, an extended, you know, kind of like extra point that I'm telling you right now. So that would be VCE, just like tips, right? How would you get VCE? Just remember, this whole thing is your common, is your VC. So VC minus um, VE plus 0.7 would be your VCE. You see what I'm saying? I hope I'm not confusing you really. So they can ask you what um, maybe, uh, well you already know what VBE is. VBE is, is 0.7 already, that's given. Uh, let's see another question, they might pop. Yeah, but but I think you get the point though. So the important thing in these particular problems is just to identify what's what. If you know where your voltage goes from, then you can kind of you know apply KVL. It's just like a regular regular um circuit. So if that was to you know if they ask us to find a VCE, I would deduct like VCE. That would have been VC. Right, minus this minus this. Um, now this would be uh, V down here, so that would be point seven plus V E, whatever V E is. Okay, that would be a question that they could ask you. Let me see, or they could ask you. Um, yeah, I'll I'll, find, I'll try to find some problems, you know, more problems. But if you understand this, you can solve any problem in transistor. Like if once you understand this concept of voltages, what goes what from where. Okay, if you have any questions, um, write them down in the comments section, and I will be glad to answer them. Okay.
Thanks.